was trying to make this video when I first got the kayak and it was all fresh, brand new and shiny, but midway through that video I realized that if I didn't get my ass in gear and get to the airport that I would miss my flight and I wouldn't be able to go to India with the boy, so I had to scrap it. Here we are again, the kayak's been used for a month, it's been hammered on the roofs of buses in India and stuff like that, so it's got a couple of scratches, but it is still plenty pretty with its own custom color, its matching outfitting to the rest of the kayak and the custom blue anodized grab handles look super dope. I'm so stoked on this colorway. Today I'm gonna to talk you through how to outfit your Piranha kayak super quickly, how to do it. Before we get started, I should talk you through the Piranha outfitting system. So, it takes a little bit of time when you first get your kayak to set it up. However, once you set it up, then the outfitting stays in place and it is rare for any piece of it to break. It's also really light compared to other outfitting systems on the market. There are other brands that have outfitting that is easier and quicker to adjust when you first get your kayak, but the trade-off for that, in my opinion, is that you end up with flimsier outfitting, more parts to break, and it's also nowhere near as light. These kayaks are coming out as some of the lightest on the market, and in my opinion, some of the strongest. So, although I have to spend 30 minutes outfitting my kayak when I first get it, I am stoked on the outfitting system in general. So, let's get started. When you get your Piranha kayak, you also get this outfitting pack, which helps you get a custom fit in your kayak for your body shape. So, today I'm gonna to talk you through how I use this pack. However, that in no way, shape or form means that you have to use these pieces of foam like I use them. Do whatever you want, try it out, see where they fit best. But before we start using this, first of all, we gotta make sure that our seat is in the right place. Fortunately for myself, I don't have to move the seat because as standard, the seat will come in the center of the kayak, which is where I like to use it in the Macno. For other kayaks, like the 9R and the Ripper, then I'll take the time to move the seat all the way back, which is just where I like to have the seat when I'm using those kayaks. If you do want to move your seat, then all you've got to do is undo these bolts. The base plate will drop off. You'll take the bolts all the way out. You'll slide the seat forwards. You'll drop the bolts back in through the seat, and then you'll attach the base plate. The base plate can be a little bit fiddly. The trick to getting it to go on really easily is to make sure that it's completely flat when you're screwing both the screws in. Personally for myself, I like to do a little bit of one and then a little bit of the other one and then tighten them up as I go. But I do know that other people screw one up all the way until it's like tight to the top and then they'll put in the next um, bolt and go from the top down, which whatever works, the important thing is that the base plate is flat. Once your seat is in the right place, then you've got to adjust your foot rest. It's just two little thumb screws on either side of the foot plate unscrew them, take the foot plate off, adjust it as you need it, put them back on. As a general rule, I like to have the balls of my feet on the foot rest, right? So not too much, not too little. I'm not crammed in there, but I've definitely got a good amount of the upper half of my foot on the foot block. This piece of foam here is actually a really important part to your kayak's outfit. It goes on top of the plastic bulkhead and it fills out all of the empty space. So if you were to piton, this stops your feet sliding past your footrest and getting stuck in it, which is a super dangerous situation, but this little piece of foam manages to stop that. So definitely worth taking the time to make sure that this goes in. When you get it, you'll see that you've got a little line here. This is your outline to cut it out to make sure it fits on the rail system. Just take a knife to that, chop it out quickly, and then you'll be able to wedge it in. Depending how tall you are, you might have to trim down this. Um, just follow the shape around, cut off as much as you need. Luckily, I'm really short and I've never ever had to trim one of these down, which is pretty sweet. Once you've got your seat position locked in, your footrest locked in, then you want to make sure that your backrest is going to be tight enough. So, sit in your boat, crank up the ratchet, make sure that it's going to be tight enough. And what I like to do is tighten it up all the way. And then, I like to put a little bit of a knot in here. I like to put a little bit of a stopper knot in here. Just because I push really hard on my feet and then I put a lot of pressure on the backrest when I'm creaking, especially when I'm doing booths and stuff like that. And so after a couple of weeks or long days and, and whatever, eventually it starts to loosen off and slip. You put a stopper knot in there, then it doesn't go anywhere and your backrest is always in the right place. Alrighty, so onto the outfitting pack. Inside your outfitting pack, you've got two pieces of foam here to adjust your seat height. Two pieces of foam here to help pad out your knees. Um, four pieces of foam right here. These go in your hip pads, help pad out your hips. You've got this. This has been a staple in the Piranha outfitting for years. Super useful. You can use it for a bunch of stuff. Um, I personally, I use it to add extra foam to my knees. And also you get a Piranha fish sponge, which is super iconic. So once again, I'm going to start with my seat first. I'm going to um, add in a piece of foam just to adjust my height. Seat height is like an interesting thing because everyone is different with their own styles and their bodies. But for myself, I like to use my hip bone to measure against and as a general rule of thumb, when I'm creaking, I like my hip bone to be below the cockpit rim. When I'm doing freestyle, I like my hip, hip bone to be either in line with it or just over it. 
Um, and I feel that gives me a good balance between like um, leverage and stability for each type of kayaking that I'm doing. I think that you're meant to undo these little screw thingies here and then lift the back up and put the foam in underneath them. But I've never done that because I just pull up the side of the seat and jam the foam in through there. And you just grab it from the other side, give it a little wiggle, and then boom, that's in there. All right, so next up I'll add the hip pad shims. I actually have freakishly skinny hips and so two shims is normally not enough for me to get a tight fit. So what I do is I take these, take the additional roll of foam that Prana gives you, trace them out, and then normally I add two layers of this and that gives me a really nice tight fit on my hip pads. Installing your hip pad shims are really easy. You just flip the hip pad up, uh, release this little Velcro strappy thingy and then slide your shims in here, put the Velcro strap thingy back on and then just put the hip pad down and jobs are good in. Next up, I'm gonna add my uh, my knee pads. Again, I like to have a little bit more padding than this. So I take these, trace them out on the roll of foam and then add a couple more layers to it. I normally do like two or three layers and that feels pretty good on my knees. So that is my go-to method to setting up a brand new kayak. It takes me about 20, 25 minutes to do it and then I'm ready to hit the water. If I have more time, then I'll also add in a heel block to the footrest. Um, that's a really cool piece of outfitting and it gives you a bit more purchase and a bit more of a solid platform to push off um, when you're boofing and paddling in general, but I just don't have time because once again, I have to be at the airport in like four hours, so I'm gonna skip that step. But for anyone with the time, I highly recommend adding one in and I'll try and find, find the old blog post on how to do it on the Piranha blog and link it below. One last thing before I go. I would say in general, and there are exceptions, but I would say in general, kayakers have really high expectations of their equipment, but they're absolutely awful at checking it and maintaining it. I have lost count of the amount of times I've rocked up to the put-in and kayaked with people and they've lost the footplate bolt or the seat bolt or another piece of their outfitting because they just haven't checked it and tightened it up. It just seems that people expect these bolts to stay in place forever even though they're getting rattled around on roof, bounced off rocks down the river and all sorts of stuff. Like eventually, if your stuff is gonna come loose, you've gotta tighten it up. That's just a way of life. But for some reason, people don't quite seem to understand that. So, to avoid having your outfitting fall out and lose it, and for you to not have the best day on the river that you can possibly have, we're gonna take the Allen key that Prana gives you. This little tool is really cool. This tightens up every single, every single bolt on the kayak. Every single piece of outfitting can be tightened with this one Allen key. We're gonna take the Allen key, and we're gonna stick it into the foam bulkhead behind our seat. It's gonna live there. <laughs> and then from now on, every once in a while, not even every week or every month or every two months, just, just occasionally, when the moment takes you, you're gonna take the Allen key out, <laughs> you're gonna go around your kayak and you're gonna check your bolt to make sure that they're tight and that they're not leaking or they're gonna fall out soon. And that's gonna enable you to have a fully functioning kayak forever. But anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope if you have a Piranha kayak and you're trying to outfit it for your first time, I hope this is a little bit useful. If you are struggling with anything, comment below or ping me a message on Instagram and I'll try and help you out. Some people as well complain about this piece of the cockpit rim digging into their shoulder when we're carrying the kayak. These people are known as sissies, but in, in all seriousness, that, that can be pretty painful. I sort of get it. Um, you have two choices. You can take this roll of foam and some duct tape and pad it out yourself, or you can go to the gym and make your own padding.